Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Both. That is Drew Galloway, and this is the KSO Show, our weekly recruiting update for you. And the most notable update of them all is I still don't have a microphone that makes me feel good about myself. So that's fun. Uh, we stick with the PlayStation headset as we grind through this this mess. I don't know. I told myself hey. today, maybe I break down and do something different. But Next Wednesday, we're, we're good. Yeah, well, I, you know, this is, this should be off air conversation, but I, I am trying to see if my brother is coming home this weekend. If so, I can have him come and get it from you in Manhattan. The only problem is he hasn't responded to my text and I sent him that at like nine o'clock last night. So um, I'm going to take that as he is not coming home. So we'll forget about it. We'll deal with the circumstances we have and we'll talk about Lincoln Cure, which who knows? Uh, that could be a circumstance that people just have to deal with that they don't really want to think about right now because there's been a lot of Cure and Oregon talk over the last month now, and it continued all through last week. I mean, we were – so to set the stage for people, you're probably wondering, weren't you guys going to go see it? We were going to Goodland on Friday night. We were like, actually on the way there. We were on the way there. We had left at a specific time to make sure we were in Goodland an hour before kickoff. And I get out of the car in Salina where I'm meeting you guys. And you're like, uh, well, did you see the story that Steve Wiltfong, our national recruiting uh, writer, just put out? And I said, nope, did not. And basically, it was a full-blown Lincoln Cure update. And it's like, oh, well, we might end up and just get information that's already out there. So it might we might be better served pushing this off a little bit. So that's what we did now. The information that was inside of that <laughs> uh, probably isn't the most entertaining and exciting uh, thing to think about uh, because the story that came out last Friday was Kansas State five-star tight end commit Lincoln Cure has a return visit to Oregon in mind. And this stems from Steve Wiltfong having a conversation with Lincoln's dad um, basically just said, I think he's happy with his decision being committed to K-State, but it's rolling around in his head uh, asking if he's right. And then um, went on to say, Oregon does a great job in staying in your ear. They're sending things, they're sending video, they're just working. So we'll see how that ends up working out. Obviously, one of the talking points through all of this has been that uh, the allure of of Oregon's relationship with Nike and what that could do post career for Lincoln cure is there, which totally makes sense why somebody would be interested in that. And so now it's going to be this probably really intense thing to watch over the next month and a half, two months getting close to signing day on making sure K state keeps Lincoln cure locked down. Now it should also be thrown out there that there was another update that came out, um, either I think it was today Wednesday as we're recording this from on threes Chad Simmons who he had direct quotes from cure then and basically some of them what you would know uh, Oregon had kept consistent contact with Lincoln and his family and they keep you know doing their best because another thing that should be pointed out Oregon does not have a tight end right now they thought they had Desan Brame from Derby. Then he flipped on them to Tennessee. And now they are trying to get all these targets that they initially wanted that committed elsewhere to try and rethink all of that and, and hop back on the Oregon wagon. I will point out, though, you know, obviously some KSO posters took some issue with uh, <laughs> the Chad Simmons update, which totally fair. Um, but what should be mentioned here is the quote, um, that says this directly from Lincoln. I get continuous support from the fans, and I feel like that is where I can have an impact on a larger scale than football. I feel like my commitment is pretty strong. K State is an amazing program in place. I took a lot of time and really thought through my process to come down to a decision. End quote. So that is the quote there. Um, the part of the story that K State uh, people are having an issue with is that uh, the next to final paragraph says cure stayed up Saturday night, watch the Wildcats move to five and one with a 31 to 28 went over Colorado and Boulder. Uh, Lincoln cure did not just stay up late on Saturday night, which by the way, not as late because he's in mountain time out in Goodland. Um, but Lincoln cure and his family drove to Boulder and were in Folsom field on Saturday night. 
which seems like uh, a notable thing there. And so, in K-State gear, not visiting Colorado. Yes, yes, K-State gear. Oh, and by the way, Chris Kleiman was in Goodland Friday night at Lincoln Cures game. So while there is smoke to scare some out there with Lincoln Cure and, and Oregon, and you should be alert to it, this also is still a recruitment that has a lot of positive signs towards K-State. And the biggest would be the fact that if you are watching this on YouTube, look in the bottom corner of the screen and see that Lincoln Cure is committed to K-State right now. This is not a head-to-head -head battle. This is not trying to get that first commitment that K-State was able to earn back in July. They have that right now with what they're working with. K-State is playing from ahead in this situation. And they still have just as many positives as Oregon does here. Um, but it does seem like more and more likely that Lincoln Kerr takes his visit to Oregon uh, on November 9th when they play Maryland. Yeah. For me, this is welcome to high level football recruiting. I mean, this, this happens every year with the five stars and the four stars where they've committed one place the place that they ended up not going to sticks around and you got to give Oregon credit here because they, they haven't quit, but I think it's because they know that they need a tight end in this cycle and they struck out with everybody initially and losing to son Brame really kind of made them backtrack and go to some other targets. But for me, I, I would still be, a little bit surprised if Lincoln Cure doesn't sign with K-State. I just think that there's so much that's positive for K-State right now. And, and another thing that really, I think it was Scott Wildcat that brought this up. You got to remember, Avery Johnson is K-State's quarterback. Avery Johnson knows Lincoln Cure pretty well. Dylan Gabriel will not be at Oregon next year. Oregon, I'm not sure if they know who their quarterback is going to be next year yet, so their quarterback probably doesn't even really care. So you kind of look at all that and you think, okay, you have that advantage. You have the advantage of, I know that Goodland's not exactly close to Manhattan, but it's a hell of a lot closer than Eugene, Oregon yeah. is. You have that he's already committed. You have that Chris Kleiman and Brian LaPac were both in Goodland over the weekend. Well, they stopped there Friday night before going to Boulder on Saturday. You have that not only was he at the season opener, the only confirmed visit that Lincoln Cure has the rest of the way is that he'll be in Manhattan next weekend for the Sunflower Showdown. So there's a lot of things that are positive going K-State's way. It's just that when you only hear the Oregon smoke, because that's coming from the national uh, writers that on three in the Oregon site, uh, themselves, you kind of panic a little bit, but then you, you remember that, okay, there's all of these other factors that come into play that I, I'm not like super worried. Like I would be, even with taking a visit to Oregon, I'd still only be on like a six or a seven on the, the panic meter just because there's so many other things that K-State has going for them right now. If you want to really kind of dive in, and figure this out. You could be rooting for Vander Plug, by the way, elite name, who is a Washington commit at tight end to flip to Oregon. I, I know that they would probably they would tell Lincoln and Vander Plug that they can make it work for both of them. But you probably feel better about where K State is for Cure if Plug were to flip to Oregon. And, and I think that you just also, if no news is good news. And like I said, the only confirmed visit that he has scheduled is for the Sunflower Showdown. I think that that probably speaks for itself and why I'm not like supremely worried. And even as much as people kind of roll their eyes at the Chad Simmons article, Chad Simmons also said that. Like the only visit that he has is to K-State. Yeah, yeah, that's, that, that's going to happen. He'll be there on... Uh, the, well, I guess, is that the 29 or no, that's 26, not, yeah, the 26, 26. So that'll be coming up. That's worth noting. And that's also a situation where K-State will have a very strong opportunity to reaffirm, uh, cures feelings that, okay, I, I don't even need to take that visit to Oregon. I, I know that this is where I want to be. That's also something that could happen 
in this process. And I would also say to this regard, we've talked about it with some other players that have been out there in the recruiting process for K-State. R.J. Collins was one where we brought it up when USC came kind of knocking around. You have these guys that are in a position that they really haven't been in for that long of a period. And so you want to make sure that you're getting the the full experience and understanding out of the situation. And I, I like I put it this way. I was talking to some people today about this. And I think you want to use like an analogy for this. This is like when you first start dating a person, like you really want to spend time with them. You're like, this is what I want. But there is that thought in the back of your head for a little bit where you go, ah, is this right? Like you're a little uneasy about it. You don't know if you're like fully bought it. And then like a month later, you're like, okay, yep, boom, we're doing this thing. Like I'm not worried about it whatsoever. And then it's everything's fine from there. I think that would be the part of the process where you're in right now, where these players have to make these commitments so far ahead of time, or at least they feel like they have to, because nothing says that you can't just show up one day. And I mean, some guys do it, but signing day, boom, this is where I'm going, sign it, go from there, whatever. But the culture around recruiting and social media and everything has led to these, Hey, I got to make this grandiose announcement months in advance before I do it. And so then you have this long waiting period where, you know, you think Lincoln Cure makes his commitment at the start of July. He has to go almost half a year. I mean, he has to go over five months until he can actually sign the paper that locks him in to K-State. And that's a long period to be going, uh, you know, I, I, I really like the decision I made. It's going to be awesome, but Am I, am I certain about it? Like this is, this is an important thing. So I think that's the stage this thing's at right now. And K-State will have to continue to do what they do to reaffirm that it's the right one. And Oregon is obviously going to do everything they can to try and be uh, the, the better looking woman in this, in this scenario here. So we'll see. It's, it's obviously not what you would want if you're a K-State fan, because you would like to have a carefree attitude and just think, oh, he's locked down, nothing to worry about. But as you mentioned, Drew, this is this high-level recruiting. This is how the game is played. you got to be ready for it one way or the other. And again, a lot of good still pointing for K-State. Like Oregon does not feel like they have this thing won, or at least I guarantee you their coaching staff doesn't feel that way. Maybe their idiot fans and other people connected to the program might feel that way. Um, but their coaches absolutely look at this and realize that they've got an uphill battle because Lincoln Cure is committed to K-State. He is visiting for the KU game. He and his family just drove out on their own dime to Boulder to watch K-State beat Deion Sanders in Colorado over the weekend. Still numerous positives that point in K-State's direction that outweigh Oregon or at least even with them. And uh, we'll see how it ends up going from from there. But Yeah, yeah I was going to say, too, you also look at K-State under Chris Kleiman. Uh, there's a very – select few players that have decommitted and flipped to a different school in the, in the Chris Kleiman era. And, and once they have them on board, it seems like they are on board for the long haul. I mean, you, you mentioned RJ Collins earlier, RJ Collins visited for the Oklahoma state uh, football game and kind of shut down anything else USC related. It, it was, I, I think I asked him like, what, what's the one thing that he really learned from uh, his visit for the Oklahoma state game. And he said, that I'm a wildcat and I don't want to be anywhere else. It's like, I, you look at that and you're like, okay, that, that this could easily happen with Lincoln Cure. And, and another positive that's going in K-State's favor that I didn't even uh, mention uh, with all the other stuff, uh, Lincoln Cure is also tweeting at uh, Noah King, K-State safety commit, because Noah King just got a four-star rating on 247, which made him the number two ranked player in the K State 2025 class and on three industry ranking, and, and was tweeting at him, like congratulating him for getting the fourth star. So you look at all that, there's a lot in K State's favor. And then there's one thing that might be in Oregon's favor, which is that he might visit Oregon. But there's a lot more positive for K State right now than Oregon. Yeah. No doubt about it. All right. Before we talk a little bit more on the recruiting front, before we close things out, I want to remind people that the Wildcats are headed to Dublin to Ireland next August for the Aer Lingus College Football Classic. Join your Wildcats by booking your getaway at cats2ireland.com. The best seats and hotels will go fast, so secure your package now. That's cats, the number two, 
Ireland.com. And as Drew and others have been pointing out to me recently, that could be uh, the third matchup between K-State and Iowa State in a six-month period if the Cats and Clones meet up in the Big 12 title game uh, at the start of December. So we, if, if you could sign me up today and guarantee me that you're playing that game a week after the game in Ames, I would take it right now because it would mean K-State is locked into that game in, in Arlington. I don't know that that's a certainty that that happens, even though K-State's playing good football right now. And I think that they could uh, have a, a good enough record. That loss to BYU might hurt them just because the schedules for BYU and Iowa State are set up uh, in a much cleaner way for them uh, over really any other team in the Big 12 right now. So we'll see how that ends up going. Uh, the rest of the recruiting update, though, what else do you have on that front for us, Drew, that you want to let the people know about before? We have a much bigger recruiting show next week uh, as we prepare the long list of visitors that will be in town for the K-State KU game. Yeah, the the one thing that I think that I'll, I'll point out as kind of a preview is that there will be two uncommitted uh, football prospects that are coming on official visits for the KU game, uh, and then two commits, and Noah King, who I mentioned earlier, and then RJ Collins, who we mentioned earlier. Uh, and then basketball-wise, I still am kind of like DY in the sense that I have not like a, a huge, like it's imminent, like it's going to happen, but I just have a weird feeling about the Malik Thomas official visit uh, next weekend that I think that he might end up at K-State. You, you got to remember, this seems like so long ago at this point, because it, it was, but Malik Thomas was the one that ended up visiting or not visiting, but he went to Madison Square Garden to watch K-State play Florida Atlantic because he wanted to watch K-State. And now K-State has kind of hung around his entire recruitment, and now they made the final list again, and now he's finally visiting. And that's the one thing that K-State has really been hung up with on Thomas is that they've been trying to sell him on Manhattan and the location, and now he's finally coming to Manhattan. That's one that kind of feels like K-State might get it wrapped up. And, and again, Basketball recruiting is a whole different animal because a lot of basketball recruits and especially the elite recruits in this class are looking to sign more in the later period. But if they can get Malik Thomas committed and signed in the early period in November, that would be just a massive, massive win for K-State. Yeah, that that's that would be huge if K-State could pull that off. That makes you instantly feel a lot better about the recruiting situation for K-State basketball. So good things to remind people about. And uh, obviously, as all that nears closer, we'll have more on the Malik Thomas and anything else basketball related right now because uh, that's one that's up in the air. But K-State going to feel like they have somewhat of an opportunity there to uh, land a five-star, be their first five-star high school recruit under Jerome yeah. Tang if they were able to do so. If you liked the recruiting show that we've been doing every week, you'll love next week's because next week's might be pretty long. Um, I, I'll, I'll say this to go back in a, in a negative way uh, for, for Lincoln Cure. His, uh, his fifth star has been taken away uh, in the on three industry rankings. So shame on two, four, seven. Every, Everybody, you know, out there. Well, you know, two four seven. There, I don't know. They're doing the Lord's work there. Five stars, no, thirty two overall. Uh, some of the others need to get with the program, like ESPN, who has Lincoln Cure as the sixty fourth player in the country, uh, when the next lowest is forty seventh from Rivals. So, uh, I put this on ESPN, and they're awesome recruiting endeavors. <laughs> they're really good at it over there. Oh, they're they're the best ones. I don't know what you're talking about. Yep, they do an awesome, awesome job. Uh, I hope everybody understands that there's a lot of sarcasm <laughs> in there. Um, but yeah, you know, because everybody, I'm, I sh maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't. I don't care. Um, they're the worldwide leader. They should have thicker skin than this if I want to take shots at them for their lackluster recruiting uh, services. Although I. I promise you, whenever they give somebody a fifth or fourth star that they don't deserve, I am going to use it. So just remember that, people. Uh, use everything that you can to your advantage and then crap on it when it doesn't go your way. So uh, we'll keep monitoring that. I have 
not much doubt that Lincoln Cure will regain that status at some point uh, as all the final updates get done over the next couple of months. But that is today's recruiting update. Like we said, next week, even bigger one coming as K-State and KU will kick off in Manhattan, and that will bring in a huge crop of visitors and then plenty of other things to get to throughout the week. Recruiting show next week, we'll probably do it later in the week, though, because Wednesday will be full of basketball content in Kansas City, so we'll probably drop it on Thursday or Tuesday. We'll just see uh, how we're feeling there, but it will not be Wednesday <laughs> next week. I can tell you that. For Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Both. Thanks for watching and listening to K-State Online. We'll be back again tomorrow with some Wildcat headlines.